Hello there guys and welcome, it's Niran here and today I am going to be going through a GP3 2014 season preview. Now I know I've never done one of these before and I understand that maybe not many people will watch this uh, because I've not done, you know, I've not done it before, I'm not known for doing it, but still, if you do have any sort of preference, if you do like GP3, then I'm hoping that this video will be accurate. Uh, my GP3 knowledge of drivers is pretty decent, I, I'd like to think, uh, because I've followed a lot of different open wheel championships for quite a long time. Uh, but maybe I might make a few mistakes when it comes to Constructors' Championship results from last season or a little bit of knowledge of the driver's past, uh, but still, or, or, you know, or teams and things like that, but I'm still hoping it's going to be as accurate and good as possible. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the 2013 lineups. They've all been announced because it's so start, close to the start of the season, uh, with it being Catalonia this, uh, this weekend. Uh, obviously being the first round of the GP3 Championship, with it being the first European round. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go through the lineups, and then I'm going to go through my top five drivers for the end of the season, and my top three rookies for the season in general. Obviously drivers who have only just joined the season, uh, who have only just joined the Championship, sorry, this season, and there is quite a lot of them. Just another note, by the time you're watching this, it's probably going to be Sunday, and I realise that the two GP2, uh, GP3 races will have already happened, on the Saturday morning and then on the Sunday morning. Uh, but when I was recording this, it hadn't happened. So this is still a preview for me, and maybe something you can compare uh, my my preview to what actually happens on the days uh, at Catalonia. But still, we're going to get into the first team then, and it is ART, of course, the Constructors' Championship uh, winners from last season. Alex Fontana, uh, previously of Genza last season. Marvin Kirchhofer and Dino Zamparelli are their drivers. So Fontana, I briefly went across uh, the Swiss driver, driving for uh, the Swiss team Genza last season, but of course, ART being seasoned experts, uh, were connected to Lotus. I don't think they really are as strongly anymore. Certainly not sponsored or you know have the same livery anymore. Uh, but I still think they run the same sort of systems, and you know the the, the ART drivers tend to go into. Uh, Lotus schemes and the such like, you know, backed by Renault and the French and all that, all those sorts of shenanigans. But still, yeah, Alex Fontana then driving the number one car. Uh, he comes into the team from Genza. Pretty decent season for him last season. Not explosive, but not horrendous either. Marvin Kirchhofer uh, is the second driver, a rookie then coming into the season uh, from the German Formula 3. I do believe he won that championship, so it'd be interesting to see how he does. Uh, I'd have thought he'll be... Um, a little bit behind towards the start compared to his teammates, uh, but towards the end of the season with the, the you know, the raw pace and ability that he has, learning the GP3 car, learning the uh, the setup of the team as well, uh, he should come strong towards the end of the season. And Dino Zamparelli is the third driver, the British driver with the Italian name, who was previously at Marussia uh, Mano Racing last season. He jumps across to the third car uh, for ART this season. Again, not an explosive season last year, sort of an average one, a little bit meh, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how he does at such a big team with all their experience. So after that, we have the second team, and that is Arden. Now, for me, this is the strongest lineup. Uh, I'm going to go through it now, and it's the Romanian Robert V. Sure, he was in the first car. Uh, Patrick Niederhauser, who drove for Genza last season al alongside Alex Fontana. A fellow Swiss driver who I have a lot of time for. I think he's a very good driver and a bit of an average team last season, really, but still making it work. Very unlucky, unfortunately, is Patrick uh, Niederhauser. So it'll be interesting to see how he does it. Such a big team uh, with a lot of experience. And then the rookie, Jan Mardenbre, probably be a little bit like Marvin Kirchhofer. Won't quite get used to the GP3 cars straight away. Uh, but with being in the British Formula 3, uh, no, sorry, uh, recently, but in the European Formula 3 last season, uh, it shouldn't be too much of a jump. But for the first few races, he might be struggling a little bit. But it's such a big team, it shouldn't take him too long to acclimatise to the championship. I really do think they're going to win the Constructors' Championship. Be sure you, of course, last season, uh, for Arden as well. The only driver not really to move on up and beyond. Uh, Carl Sainz Jr. obviously moving into the World Series by Renault. Sort of a step up, and then obviously Kvyat going into, um, obviously after winning the GP3, going up into Toro Rosso for Formula 1 this season. But I really do expect, the, uh, you know, relatively big things from Fischer. I'm expecting him to be challenging for wins, as well as Patrick Niederhauser, who I actually think is going to win the championship. But I'll go through that in a little bit more detail later. I want to go through my top five drivers, but still, yeah, I do really like Patrick Niederhauser. A lot of ability, a lot of pace. Uh, he's been sort of up there for the last two seasons without really doing a huge amount, but still up there, thereabouts. You can probably count on him to be in the top five for pretty much most of the races uh, in a season, in a given season. And of course, Jan Mardenbro, the rookie, came through the GT Academy, and I think he'll do a very good job by the end of the season. A little bit like Marvin Kirchhoff or any other rookie, really in the championship. And next up we've got Karayan. A significant step step down really for Karayan in terms of last season they had Kevin Corgis and Aro Vino. Two very hot prospects. Aro Vino didn't really end up working out. was a little bit uh, under underperforming in that sense but Corgis was very good last season. Uh, this season 
They've gone for Carmen Jorda, the Spanish female racer. Uh, Jimmy Erickson, the Swedish driver, and Santiago Urita, uh, the Uruguayan. Now, not many of those drivers have a huge amount of pedigree. Carmen Jorda last season not doing a great job, but of course, at you know, at a, at a very small team being, I think, tried in last season again. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you know, Carmen Jorda maybe will step up. Um, probably the leading female driver in the category last season. Uh, possibly, I don't know. No, well, was Alice Powell in GP3 last season, or was that the season before for status? That was last season. No, that was the season before. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do like Carmen Yorda as a driver, um, but she didn't really perform a huge amount last season, but that was obviously because she was in a pretty diabolical car. So, yeah, this season will be interesting for her to see with a, you know, a bit of a better car, a bit more experience in Korea, not a huge amount more, because obviously they only came into the championship last season, but still, Formula Renault experience, Carino, uh, Carino, and sorry, have. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with in junior categories. Uh, her teammates, though... Jimmy Erickson, who last season, I think, raced for Status, the Irish team. Um, uh, similar colour scheme, so he won't have to get used to that. But, actually, interestingly, Jimmy Erickson didn't do a very good job last season. When I was looking through uh, GP3 testing, and he's pretty much consistently up there, especially in Belgium, and uh, the Spa testing, uh, certainly up there. So it'll be interesting to see how he does during the season. Maybe his racecraft isn't as good as his overall you know, qualifying and practice times. I don't really know. don't know much about the Swedish driver, but his other teammate then, is Santiago Uriton, someone who I knew nothing about, had to research. He finished fourth in Euro F3 Open last season. Uh, slight, you know, a decent championship to do well in, not quite as prestigious as the overall Formula 3 European Championship, uh, which is where Raffaele Marcello, the GP2 driver, came from, and people like Alex Lynn and Lucas Auer. But still a decent championship to do well in. So um, then we move on to Carlin, which is Alex Lynn, Emil Bernstoff and Luis de Silva. Uh, Lynn uh, Bernstoff, uh, who is effectively British but half Danish, and Alex Lynn, bo uh, both British. Uh, technically, Alex Lynn, who I mentioned a minute ago, came from the European Formula 3 Championship. Very prestigious uh, background, really, in terms of how he did in that championship. Prema Power Team uh, running himself, Auer and Marcello, great you know, uh, force in Formula 3, really, across the European scene. He did very well to the Brit uh, last season, so jumping into a Carlin car, unsurprisingly, a real British force uh, in motorsport racing as well. Not quite as much uh, recently, but definitely in the past. Uh, Bernstoff, who was third for Lotus uh, Junior in the German Formula 3 Championship. And Luis Silva, the Macau driver, not really expecting a huge amount in terms of point scores for him. Uh, but the other two drivers I'll certainly be expecting a decent amount from, especially Lynn and Bernstoff probably fighting for the lower end of the points pretty much every single race. Uh, next up we've got Marusha Manor Racing, another British team. Technically they've got Patrick Kujala. The Finnish driver, Ryan Cullen, the Irishman, and Dean Stoneman. Uh, Patrick Kuyala last season, who drove for Karayan. Uh, not too bad, probably, you know, quite, you know, quite substantially a third driver in that team. The least experienced, but with a season of experience, you'd probably be expecting him to be fighting for points on a bit more of a regular basis. Uh, Ryan Cullen, probably not so much, uh, given last season. And then, of course, Dean Stoneman. Now, if you don't know the story behind Dean Stoneman, a uh, very good racer, dri uh, drove in the FIA Formula 2. Uh, got to GP3, had a decent Formula 3 background in Britain as well. Uh, but then unfortunately a few years ago got cancer, had the battle with cancer, came back from that and last season raced for the first time as a rookie in effect last season and came third, got on the podium in Abu Dhabi over in Yas Marina. It was just insane, like literally so, he's just got such talent and so just so much of an inspiration to motorsport in general to come back from having cancer and to come back and do that in a first race with so, so much ability and so much pace and so much raw talent. Uh, be very interesting to see how he does over a whole season. Uh, next up, I'm going to get blast through the the next four teams quite quickly because they're the sort of lower end of the scale. Uh, well, a few of them are, but anyway, um, Hilma, uh, Ivan Taranov, the Russian, Nelson Mason, the Canadian, and Bytska Visser, uh, the Dutch uh, female racer, the young female racer. Now, I don't know much about these drivers, but uh, last season, Ivan Taranov uh, doesn't have much experience. I wouldn't expect a huge amount of, uh, from him. A bit of uh, Formula Renault and Formula 3 experience. Uh, in native countries, but not too much. Uh, Nelson Mason, who was third in the Euro F3 Open, the same category that the Uruguayan Urita came from. Uh, and then Visser, who was eighth in the ADAC Formula Masters Championship uh, in Germany in 2012 and was 21st in the World Series by Renault last season uh, for that really bright orange team. I can't remember what they're called. What are they called? I can't remember what they're called, but still, uh, a lot of orange for a Dutch racer. Not, not really surprising. Um, but still wouldn't expect a huge amount from that team, in all honesty, Hilmer. Uh, came into the championship late to replace Russian time, who were going to have a GP3 team running along their side. Uh, their GP2 team, of course, uh, that won the Constructors' Championship last season, I think. Did they? I can't remember. Yes, I think they did with Dillman and Sam Bird. Uh, but still, they pulled out and Hilmer replaced them. The next up, we've got Jenza, 
Uh, Paul Verhaag, Matteo Tusha and Adelie Funk. Quite a strong lineup actually. Paul Verhaag, an interesting one. Saw fluctuated between GP2 and GP3. He's a Norwegian driver. Had a decent time in GP3. Got promoted into GP2 and then sort of flirted between MP Motorsport, the Dutch team, and Hilma, the German team, in the last two years. Uh, uh, career sort of came to a bit of a halt, but he's now been given a second chance uh, in the GP3 again. I wouldn't be surprised if he got a few podiums this season, or at least one. Really, he's quite a quick driver, but he might be a little bit inconsistent at times. That has been always one of his problems. Uh, the Norwegian, his teammate Matteo Tusha, who was uh, quite a young driver when he was about in the FIA Formula 2 Championship, uh, did well in that championship. Not sure if he did anything last season when that uh, series became defunct, but he's now moved into Genza. A decent rookie, wouldn't uh, be surprised if he did well uh, this season and got a decent point. So probably about between 10th and 15th in the championship, I would hazard a guess. And Adley Fong, the Chinese racer who's been in British Formula 3 occasionally, uh, but is again a rookie to GP3. And next up, Trident, another team of which I have no idea of any of the three dri drivers they've picked. Victor Carbone, who was in Indy Lights uh, last season, he'll uh, be expected to be the driver who, um, who is the leader of the team, I would hazard a guess. Uh, Roman De Beer, uh, who doesn't have much of a background, um, fluctuated between Italian Formula 3 and 2012. Didn't do much last season, I uh, wouldn't expect uh, too much from him. And Denis Nargulin, another driver, another Russian, uh, who's sort of been around in native countries. Uh, in his native Russia doing championships, but not much across the board in Europe. And then finally, status. Nick Yellowly, Richie Stanaway, and Alfonso Chelis Jr., a Mexican driver. Now, of course, the first two drivers uh, you may know. Nick Yellowly, especially another uh, British driver doing well last season in GP3 with Carlin, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong again. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he was with Carlin, another very good driver with a lot of talent and a lot of speed. Uh, so I'll be expecting him to get uh, a lot of podiums this season, if not wins, uh, really, and probably to be up there in the top five by the end of the season. And then Richie Stanaway, a New Zealand uh, driver, uh, I think raced uh, in the New Zealand Toyota sort of open wheel championship uh, last season. Also done a few races in GP3 as well, and I think a few Formula 3 championship races uh, across Britain and in Europe as well. I think based in Europe as well uh, is the New Zealander. So I wouldn't be surprised if he got the odd win uh, or maybe one or two wins uh, this season, or at least a few podiums. And then Alfonso Chelis Jr., I have no idea about. Can't access anything about because he doesn't have a Wikipedia page, but he's um, assuming a young Mexican driver. Not much experience, so I, I, I thought he'll be the third driver most definitely in that status team. But I've gone through the lineup then for 2013, so now I'm going to go through the top five racers that I expect to be uh, fighting for wins and podiums by the end of the season. I've already said uh, who I expect to win the championship this season, or who I think will win the championship this season, and that is the Swiss driver Patrick Niederhaus at Racing for Arden International. If an Arden driver doesn't win the championship this season, I will literally be so surprised. Uh, really be very surprised. I think Niederhaus will be right up there. Uh, his teammate V. Shoyu as well. Mardenborough, I think, will be up there, but probably about 6th, 7th or 8th. Not necessarily in the top 5. Uh, Alex Fontana as well, possibly for ART, I think will be up there. As well as Nick Yellowly uh, and Richie Stanaway. I think I've been through 5 there already. If I, yes, I have. So the 5 that I'm expecting to be fighting for the championship this season. Niederhauser, Robert V. Shoyu, Alex Fontana of ART, Nick Yelley of Status, and his teammate Richie Stanaway. In terms of the best rookies, Marvin Kirchhofer, the ART, pardon me, our ART driver uh, last season, uh, sorry, this season, but of course winning the German Formula 3 last season. Alex Lynn uh, racing for Carl in this season, and Jan Mardenborough of Arden. I think that's a pretty safe bet for the, uh, the top three rookies this season. I'd be very surprised if that's not the case, and I think they will actually possibly challenge uh, for race wins, podiums especially, and possibly even the title by the end of it too. So I'm hoping you've enjoyed this first ever preview I've ever done. I was going to actually put it on my second channel. Uh, for you guys, uh, I, I've never actually told you I have a second channel. I do have a second channel. Never even promoted it, so how it has 25 subscribers is beyond me. But um, I'll put a link in the description. I'm not going to start uh, uploading on that channel until after the exam period, because I just don't have time. Uh, so I'll be blitzing out videos on my main channel on and sort of weekly or two videos a week on my second channel as well. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. Uh, I don't know if you've, enjoyed, if you've liked um, the logo, the new channel logo. Uh, the channel has a bit of a rebrand as well, but still, uh, that's completely off topic. But, but going back to GP3, it be very interesting to see how this GP3 season plays out. A lot of rookies, a lot of drivers with a bit of experience as well, sort of make or break for a few drivers like Vishoyu and Nida Hazard. They've got to do well. This is their third season, I think, uh, in GP3 uh, for the both of them. Uh, so they've really got to make sure they do well this season. Uh, but nevertheless, I hope uh, Niederhauser wins, or I hope... Uh, well, I don't mind who wins, actually, I like all of the drivers, really. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how those guys do. Nevertheless, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment about enjoying it if you enjoyed the video that much. Or comments, any suggestions on how to improve my channel. 
I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.